at 3 a.m. on November 9, 1979, Zbigniew Brzezinski, a national security advisor for President Jimmy Carter, was awoken by a terrifying phone call. According to officials from the North American Aerospace Defense Command, or NORAD, the Soviet Union had just launched hundreds of ballistic missiles with a direct trajectory for the continental United States. America was about to be nuked by Russia. In retaliation for this alarm, all air defense interceptors were activated, and at least 10 warplanes took to the sky, including the President's doomsday plane. Even a few air traffic controllers were ordered to ground all commercial aircraft immediately. Still, at no point were POTUS or the Secretary of Defense notified. In the 1979 NORAD alert, a mix of Soviet-inspired paranoia, human error, and early computer technology caused a nearly catastrophic blunder at the United States' top missile defense compound, leading to one of the closest calls of the Cold War. False alarms. Ever since the dawn of the nuclear age, American and Soviet military commanders have incorporated increasingly elaborate technology into atomic weapons in their delivery systems to minimize the risk of accidental or unauthorized launches. One example was a hotline between Washington and Moscow, installed in 1963 to reduce the risk of misunderstandings between the two world powers as well as the Pentagon's Ballistic Missile Early Warning System, or BMU, which provided about 15 minutes of warning time before a strike. Still, false alarms have continually occurred throughout the years, including when a BMU radar in Greenland picked up on echoes from the moon and generated a false report of a missile attack. By 1972, the North American Aerospace Command, or NORAD, a combined organization between the United States and Canada, began implementing complex network warning systems operated from its headquarters in the Colorado Mountains. Still, like all early technology, the complex computer system had a risk of failure or error. Such false warnings had the potential to ignite an inadvertent war due to an unpredicted sequence of events that became a real threat to the entire world. While details about Soviet false alarms are relatively unknown due to the nation's secrecy, Many such accidents are known to have occurred in America, even as most remain classified for years until the end of the Cold War. Still, a rare false alert about an impending missile attack in 1979 actually reached the public, causing mayhem and chaos. An all-out attack. On the early morning of November 9th, 1979, North American Aerospace Defense Command analysts in Colorado were shocked to see their monitors light up with alarming news. The Soviet Union had launched hundreds of nuclear ballistic missiles at the continental United States. Unlike previous false warnings that operators at NORAD had experienced before, this alarm also made its way to locations plugged into the Worldwide Military Command and Control System, or WIMEX, the military's 1960s sophisticated software that connected far-flung outposts of American strategic defense and provided data from satellites and perimeter radar. The WIMEX system was so sophisticated and processed defense data so quickly that it had automated authority to unilaterally issue preparations for war. In addition, this time, the alert was also blaring in multiple defense offices, including the Strategic Air Command Center, the Pentagon National Military Command Center, and the Alternate National Military Command Center. It all indicated that a full-scale nuclear attack was coming. Zbigniew Brzezinski, President Jimmy Carter's national security advisor, was immediately awakened in the middle of the night by a series of phone calls from a military assistant, beginning with a briefing informing him of the incoming threat. Knowing that Carter's decision time to issue a retaliation order was from three to seven minutes, Brzezinski told the military assistant that he would stand by until he received further confirmation about the Soviet launch before calling the American leader. Minutes later, he was told that more than 2,500 missiles were indeed approaching. Preparations The information on the monitors quickly led to defensive actions. In response, missile crews and air defense systems were put on heightened alert. Nuclear bomber crews were deployed, and almost a dozen fighter-interceptor planes were launched. 
Moreover, the National Emergency Airborne Command Post, used by the President to control American forces during a nuclear conflict, was launched from Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland, but without President Carter or Secretary of Defense Harold Brown. As Brzezinski quietly paced around in his house, waiting for further details to finally contact Carter, he received a third phone call. According to a military officer on the other side of the line, the United States' early warning systems, which measure scientific readings like seismic activity and other phenomena, were not reporting anything related to ground-based ballistic missile launches. Additional software checks ultimately revealed the truth. The scare had been a false alarm, and there were no incoming missiles. In the book From the Shadows, The Ultimate Insider's Story of Five Presidents and How They Won the Cold War, written by Robert M. Gates, he described the National Security Advisor's experience with the November 9th blunder, as told by former staffers, quote, One minute before Brzezinski intended to call the president, Odom called a third time to say that other warning systems were not reporting Soviet launches. Sitting alone in the middle of the night, Brzezinski had not awakened his wife, reckoning that everyone would be dead in half an hour. It had been a false alarm. Someone had mistakenly put military exercise tapes into the computer system. Media Coverage Due to the alarm's severe implications, the incident quickly leaked to the media, with major news outlets like the Washington Post and the New York Times printing stories on the incident. The latter even published a whole retelling of the event on November 11th, 1979. In the text, the newspaper acknowledged that a false start triggered some of the nation's war defenses against a non-existent missile attack. Had the six-minute-long alert lasted for one more minute, the Pentagon sources on the story claimed that the information would have definitely been shared with the President or Secretary of Defense. The story also remarked that the incident warranted a military response, stating, quote, As a result, ten jet interceptors from three bases in the United States and Canada scrambled aloft, and missiles throughout the nation went on low-level alert. Still, like all other records, the story confirmed that the alert was deemed insufficiently urgent to warrant a presidential or military top brass notification. Evidently, no one wanted to warn the reporters and further scare the American public, and thus the phone call went to security advisor Zbigniew Brzezinski, a more or less mid-level employee. While the spokesperson for the Pentagon stated that the United States military was satisfied with the response to the threat of November 9th, the false alarm did raise an immediate outcry from British legislators vehemently opposed to nuclear weapons. Still, the White House Press Secretary, Jody Powell, dismissed all criticism of the NORAD incident. Russian Response The behind-the-scenes story of the What If incident became even more complicated once Soviet leadership learned about the false warning. The Soviet Supreme was offended enough to lodge a formal complaint with Washington. On November 14th, Russian leader Leonid Brezhnev alarmed about the extreme dangers of a false nuclear warning, issued a statement via Ambassador Anatoly Dibirnin regarding the matter. The Soviet Supreme's callous message regarding the NORAD incident, which was unclassified after the Cold War had ended, read, quote, Mr. President, I think it is quite understandable that said fact should cause a feeling of extreme anxiety in the mind of every state leader who is responsible for the policy of his country. It is reported that an unforeseen error has occurred. Let it be so but a false signal of nuclear missile attack did take place, and this is fraught with a tremendous danger. What kind of mechanism is it which allows the possibility of such incidents? The report also included a scathing reference to America's presidential management. According to Brezhnev, the Western world could have found itself on the brink of unimaginable peril without the knowledge of top United States leaders. While the statement recognized that human error was to blame for the incident, it also stated that it never should have happened in the first place. Finally, the message ended with a warning from the Russians, quote, I think you will agree that there should be no errors in such matters. They must be completely excluded, not 99, but 100%. Although now references are made to the fact that the error occurred due to a computer fault, it is clear that in the final analysis, appropriate decisions were made by people. I could not help, Mr. President, drawing your secret. According to the communist leader's message, such a callous human error would never happen under his regime. In retaliation for the incendiary message, Pentagon officials replied 
that the Kremlin had used erroneous information to redact such assertions and confirmed that Moscow had nothing to worry about, as United States forces always had the situation under control. Investigation After a thorough investigation, it was determined that the false alarm resulted from a mistake made by a military officer and the failure of United States defense computers to recognize it. The document stated that a lieutenant colonel of the NORAD headquarters in Colorado was given access to the wrong machine, and the unknown officer erroneously punched a war games tape into a missile warning component of WiMAX. As such, the system was unable to tell the difference between a drill and reality. Still, the precise mode of failure could not be replicated. Harold Brown, who was later uncovered as the guilty military officer, called National Security Advisor Brzezinski and explained to President Carter that he should be prepared for another unrelated malfunction in case it generated another false alert. According to Brown, to counter the inevitable future incidents, the Defense Department should heavily rely on the human element of the nation's missile attack warning system. Aftermath At the time of the November 9th incident, tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union were relatively low, and according to later accounts, there was some skepticism about the strange warning from the beginning, especially as communication between the warning center and American radar sites indicated that the machines were not picking up on a missile attack. Within months of the incident, however, tensions spiked between the two world powers when the Soviets invaded Afghanistan in December of 1979, and the friction continued to rise as President Ronald Reagan took over the country's leadership. Still, had communication systems been down at the time, or had the radars detected unrelated missile launches or similar activity, the November 9th incident could have become a real tragedy. According to a congressional investigator, the size of the alleged attack would have made Pearl Harbor look like a Sunday picnic. In the months following the 1979 NORAD alert, United States warning systems generated three more false alarms on May 28th, June 3rd, and June 6th, all in 1980. The Pentagon claimed that the cause of the malfunctions was a failed 48-cent microelectronic integrated circuit and faulty message design. Moreover, declassified documents on the incident and other false warnings of Soviet missile attacks delivered to the Pentagon and military commands by computers at NORAD in 1979 and 1980 were published for the first time by the National Security Archive in recent years. Today, the 1979 NORAD alert is recognized as a sobering reminder of the potentially dangerous mixture of human error and computer war machines. Thank you for watching Dark Docs. Before you go, don't forget to hit the like button, and if you enjoyed our video, please share it with someone who might like it. And for more historical content about the Cold War and other global conflicts, subscribe to this and all our Dark Documentaries channels. Stay tuned.